we have with us uh, uh, the directors. It takes a village to actually uh, ensure that uh, India achieves this extremely proud and glorious moment. And I have with me uh, directors from uh, different space centers here. Let me go to Mr. Rajarajan first. Uh, sir, he is the man who launched the vehicle. So I'm sure you had a lot of uh, anxious moments before uh, you know heading towards this uh, success story and scripting it. Yeah, definitely. These are exciting moments. A lot of lesson learning from Chandrayaan 2 and uh, so many simulation tests, tests and on the ground like integrated hot test, cold test and do all this algorithm, break it sure, the configuration, reconfiguring and whether anything to be done and all those things have been done and when every thing has comes into a synchronized manner of thousands of things, comes in a synchronized manner, it gives a goosebumps to any of them, so even if you so confident that it, we have done so many, but it gives you a lot of excitement when it is really culminating and making it a successful soft landing on the moon. Another unsung hero is Mr. Neelesh Desai. Sir, what were the greatest learnings from Chandrayaan 2 which has been uh, 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 learnt and unlearnt with respect to Chandrayaan 3? Yeah, so it was a great learning experience. So after the uh, failure of Chandrayaan 2 soft landing, all of us put together our brains all speak English, and no? worked towards the hazard detection and evidence scheme because that has to be the major brain behind soft landing and safe landing. So for that, especially our space application center at Ahmedabad, which is working on the development of various sensors and this processing system. So we worked out, re reconfigured the whole system. In fact, we have in, in totality in the total lander configuration, we have made around 21 changes. It is not that everywhere there was some mistakes or some uh, deficiencies, but help we India try to now. make it all more robust and rugged this help and that India? way we improved the whole answer. configuration and the, this time the mo emphasis was more on testing. So we carried out a what, lot of digress testing in lab, of course we do the testing, then we did very great field trials, we had drone tests, we did testing on helicopter, we did testing with aircraft. We I understand there were several uh, simulations that were also put in place, but then what is this? What does this really mean for India? I have with me Mr. Unni Krishnan from Vikram by uh, Space Center. Yeah, so this is the vehicle the LVM3 that has launched the um, uh, Chandrayaan uh, in July, and today it has come and landed. It's a great uh, achievement for the country as well as for the scientific community. First of all, we have demonstrated flawlessly that we can execute such a mission that can take off from Earth and travel 3.8 lakh kilometers and then precisely land on Moon where we wanted. And that too a place on uh, in the southern south pole of Moon, which no other country has got. So that way, it is an end to end perfectly executed mission that has almost followed the nominal path and the landing was very, very soft. And it's still not crescendo yet. I uh, have with me Mr. Padma Kumar, another unsung hero. Uh, so, what can we expect next? Will the, ro will the rover really be removed from the Vikram lander? Typically, it may take around five hours to prepare the ramps in such a way that the rover will be able to come down safely. And uh, we expect that around uh, five to five and a half hours later, the uh, rover will be able to land on the surface. Uh, so that's the timeline that we have now. Yeah. Right. A few hours from now, we will be heading towards the next uh, glorious moment. And uh, this will really open the door for many more uh, scientific missions, especially with uh, evidence found of water as well as ice on the craters of the southern pole of this moon. Back to you. Can you please speak to more of these moon stars? Because we want to hear the voices. We want to hear the voices of these people, the unsung heroes behind Chandrayaan 3. We want to hear more from them, please. Yes, we want to really hear more from, you know, different people who have actually made this uh, mission a success. Uh, a little more from your end, sir, if you can throw a little more light on, uh, you know, the different kinds of challenges that you faced mainly with respect to this and how long did you take to ensure that this, uh, that India scripts his Street. See, first of all, uh, this Chandrayaan 3 is the heaviest payload that is taken to orbit by the LVM 3. And uh, that too, LVM 3, we had two um, commercial missions for the one web. So, making a third vehicle and then making it ready was first challenge for meeting the slot. Because if we miss the slot, then we have to wait another year. 
So that is with respect to launching and then uh, ensure that all adequate care is taken to ensure that the Sindrian is launched into the required orbit with the uh, specifications, meeting all the specifications. So that is the beginning of this mission. Second is after once that is done, second uh, objective is say, we are gradually raising the orbit and leaving the Earth's gravity field and then get into a translunar injection and then it is getting captured. So it's a mission wise, it's a very intricate and tricky which we have done before but then it is again whenever you do there is risk but then subsequently the, once the vehicle is added velocity then we are always the onboard propulsion is killing the velocity reducing the velocity because we don't require that much velocity to move, uh, orbit around the moon so today also from 1.6 kilometer per second we have been reducing the velocity by firing the thrusters and then making it land with one meter per second so that is the type of challenge involved and you know the moon in moon there is no atmosphere when a vehicle re-enters the earth atmosphere 99 percent of the energy is killed by aero braking there we don't have it is actually absolutely it is vacuum so the entire braking has to be done by the thrusters and that too by throttling the thrusters so it is very tricky to uh, synchronize for thrusters in throttled condition that means you are reducing the thrust and then ensure that it is not having very high rates and then making it land vertically so it's a mission wise it's a very exciting and we have done it and we have done it in such a way that it has gone through the path the way we wanted and has landed very smoothly also when it comes to rough landing in the southern pole I mean, how do you ensure that uh, the Vikram lander lands uh, as smooth enough, uh, you know, considering the many craters that are found on moon surface? Yeah, the one point is to select the right landing site. Three, Chandrayaan 2 orbiter uh, had a very good camera, VHR system, which is still working. With the help of that uh, uh, camera, we have actually had a very good uh, map of the moon surface now. A bed, uh, around some 30 centimeter resolution maps are there. With that, we were able to identify a, an area which is uh, generally devoid of uh, much of the craters and the ups and downs. So, uh, more or less, an even area that we were able to find out. And that area was really targeted in this mission. And uh, we have the uh, on board itself, we have a system which actually looks at where we are going to exactly land. And if it contains uh, more uh, unevenness, uh, we have a strategy to sidestep and uh, do the landing. And that was done. So, uh, with these two strategies, we were able to ensure that we are landing on a very smooth surface with the least amount of trouble. I mean. So, it looks like a lot of strategies that were really worked out and put in place to ensure that uh, India sees this glorious moment. Is it possible to ask the scientists? Well, it is still the first step forward. A lot that depends on... Yes, yes. Pratibha, is it possible to ask the scientists on uh, the next big expectations that the world will have, that we have from the beautiful machines called the Vikram Lander and the Pragyan Rover? Well, there is a question that is uh, come in. So, what are the expectations? So, this is over. What next can we expect, especially from the Vikram Lander as well as the Pragyan Rover? See, the next important step is opening the, uh, the ram and then bring out the, uh, the rover. So, the rover can move autonomously and it has got a camera, it has got payload. It will do experiment at different places on the uh, surface of moon. It can uh, experiment in the sense that it can penetrate the, uh, the surface of moon. And there are payloads on the lander also. It is doing measurement of the atmosphere. And it is uh, there is a probe which will get into the regolith and measure the temperature and find out what is the type of thermal characteristics. We need to know what is behind the regolith. So these are all important data. And on the propulsion module, which is orbiting, there is a payload called shape which will look at Earth and get the signature of Earth. So when you look a planet where life is there from a distance, you get a signature. This signature we can use for finding out exoplanets future when you look at something and compare the signature. So there are very many experiments. All these experiment data will be available to the public, I mean, those who are uh, scientists and others. And then we'll do the analysis and we'll come out with exciting let us hope for exciting you know, data discoveries from this data. So. so how do you plan to celebrate? Yeah, celebration is more with more work because the work gives us the best hype. Right. 
celebration. Uh, yes. Next week, uh, next month, we have the mission to San Aditya. Aditya. So Aditya. we are going to change our focus and work for that. And beyond that, we have missions like Gaganyan and all. So there are exciting works ahead. So we work more. India is now over the moon, but then yes, next we expect over the sun. Uh, that is uh, exactly what the scientists here have to say. Back to you.